All right, so in this one, we are going to be setting up the site to eventually go live. That means we're going to bring it onto a real server and actually have it running in real production mode. Um, so we're going to set up everything for production and get it onto a server and actually activate that server. And this one, we are going to be using webfaction.com. And webfaction is a great service that is a few things. It's inexpensive and it also they also have great support. So if you run into problems with going live, their support is awesome because they can look at the server and your code and give you some suggestions, especially if you diverted from what we've done here. And since we've worked with them so much, they've actually given our students discounts to their service. So you can start off with just a month and I believe their service is $9.95 a month. Uh, it might have changed a little bit, but it's definitely one service for uh, one month for the, or excuse me, two months for the price of one. Uh, you would just go to this link right here. And this, this link will all be in, all these links will be on our GitHub page, as well as the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll also be in there. Um, so if you go ahead and copy this, for example, you'll go here, it'll take you to this link and notice it'll say your coupon is already set up and it's ready to go. It's gonna happen after the free trial ends and then you're gonna actually redeem this coupon um, inside of the control panel. Uh, of course, the discount is automatically applied. It's already there, it's already working. So if we go to OK and we look at the pricing, um, it's actually $8.50 a month if you pay yearly um, or $9.50 a month if you pay monthly. Now again, if you're gonna do something yearly, you might as well do this right here, six months, or do the three years one. It's 65% off for three years. That is huge on a service that's already uh, well, fairly in inexpensive, especially because they will give you a lot of advice for all types of things. I'm a very big fan of WebFaction, um, especially when you're getting started. Now, if you expect your service to blow up, there are other services that I do recommend. Heroku.com is one of them. And on joincfe or Heroku.com, on joincfe.com, we actually show you how to launch on Heroku as well. Um, so if you go to joincfe.com, you can see this. Also, if you look at our get uh, um, on YouTube, so YouTube Coding for Entrepreneurs, we have a project called Launch with Code that also shows you how to launch on GitHub at, or excuse me on Heroku as well. But launching on Heroku is just slightly different um, and a little bit more challenging than launching on Web Faction. Now, for those of you who are on Linux and Windows, uh, excuse me, Linux and Mac, you are fine. You can use the terminal completely to actually launch on Web Faction. If you're on Windows, on the other hand, you're gonna to wanna to download something called PuTTY. So PuTTY Windows. So PuTTY is an SSH client. So SSH means secure shell connection, basically. And the terminal, we can do those secure shell connections without doing a whole lot, right? The terminal is already built in for doing something like that. So that's something to note. Um, and now that we've got that out of the way, you can sign up for Web Faction if you'd like. Again, they are affiliate links. We do get commission for bringing you guys there, but it does help us actually build these videos um, because they are a great service. The only reason that we work with them in the first place is because they help all of our students so much making sure that their sites are up and running and they are super responsive. Of course, it is a company, so they're not gonna be right then and there responding to you, but they will always help answer your questions, even if it's not directly related to your server. It might be something within Django itself because they are all developers. Um, so that's why we work with them. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, I recommend that you sign up for this. At least you can do the free trial. So the free trial, you can at least do the launching part and see if that's even worth it for you. And then you can go even further than that. So the free trial uh, is something, I think it's maybe a couple days, but it's it's worth at least trying out um, to get your site running, um, especially if you've never done it before, um, which we'll do in future videos. In this one, we are actually gonna set up Django to get ready for actually launching in future, uh, launching it on any kind of server, whether it's on um, Web Faction or if it's on um, our like Heroku server or something else. So to do this, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be changing how our settings.py file works. And the reason we're changing it is because of this debug stuff, right? So debug being true, we have to actually change this so it works on the production environment and it also works on our local environment without us actually having to change a whole lot. So inside of Try Django 18, we're gonna make a new folder here. This folder, we're gonna call it settings, and that's gonna be our new settings 
folder. We're going to make it a Python module. And to do that, we just go in here and say, save this as init underscore py. And this makes it as a Python module. I'm going to go ahead and close out that init for now. And this settings.py file, we are going to keep, but I'm going to keep it as reference. So I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it old, call it old underscore settings. So old underscore settings. And inside of settings, I'm going to make a new file called base.py. So a new file in here, save it is as base.py. All right, so the old settings, I'm going to copy this entire thing and paste it in here. Okay, cool. So now we've got our settings um, and Django is going to work just fine. So it's going to work exactly as expected because what's going to happen is it's the WSGI is going to look for settings. So dot settings is going to go to the folder because we made it a Python module, it's actually gonna work correctly. Uh, but there is one thing, there's a couple things that we'll have to do still in this folder, but we don't actually have to change anything other than um, a, a few things within the init. So in the init, we wanna do from.base import all. That's all we need to do. So from base import all. So now we have our settings all set up. It's ready to go, except for a few things. So base, so the base directory now, so this has actually changed one level. Right, we actually added it into a new directory, right? So it used to be above or at the same directory level. So we changed this base dir. This is no longer coming to the root of the project, but rather it's coming to the try Django 18 folder. This would come out to that, which is not what we want. And it's a really simple fix. So we just add, we copy this, paste it in front and add it to the end and append a parentheses at the end. And now that base directory is correct. So, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and do python manage.py and collect static. And it's going to go to the correct static root. So we're seeing that correctly, right? Virtual environment, static and env, and then static root. That's good. Okay, so if I say no, um, and I changed it back to what it was originally and did collect static, it's now trying to go into the source static env, right? It's not going into the virtual environment, is which is what we don't want to see. So let's go ahead and redo everything, say no again, and collect static, and now we've got that in the right place. So we can say yes if we wanted to, nothing's going to override because we haven't changed anything. Uh, but now we have our settings correct, and it's actually working. So if I did python manage.py run server, and we came back in here and refreshed, everything's still working. It still works completely, right? Um, if we have the wrong password, it's going to say that. We can see all that data, we can see all that stuff. Perfect, so that means that we've got at least the first part of this done and ready to go. Um, so now in our init, uh, in this folder in general, we have to think about kind of what we're doing here. So we have this settings.py file, and if we have another, a few other files, so let's put a try and accept blocks here. So we'll first do from .production import all, and then we can do accept pass and then from, or then try again, from dot local import all, and then accept pass. So the reason I'm putting these things in here, well, it should be somewhat clear maybe. Well, we've got our base file, so for sure we wanna have our base settings in there. Um, we also wanna have our production settings, depending on whether or not production is there. And then we wanna have our local settings. But you could also do something else like, like for example, I have an iMac, so I could say iMac. Right, from iMac, and then I also have a MacBook Pro, and I can say MacBook Pro. And then I can have all these different settings on places that I'm trying out different production environments or different development environments, right? So this is actually how you would kind of go around about doing that. And notice that since they are in try blocks, um, they're gonna fail, like the production one is gonna fail because it's not actually in here. So it's just gonna pass, it's gonna run an exception. So nothing actually happens here. So I can actually leave all this stuff, run the server again, and nothing happens. Now, if I changed it, so let's say for instance, I did from dot production import, and I tried to run it again, notice it already says an import error, because we don't have that file. So let's actually create that file. I'm gonna make a new file in here and save it as production.py. Okay, so this is gonna be our production file. And then I'm gonna make another one, call it local.py. All right. So this is now getting all of these right here. And what I actually wanna do is actually put local.py up first. So local is the one that I wanna show before production. 
Um, and since local is here, we want that one to load in. And then we actually go production. We're not even gonna bring local over. We're just gonna leave it off. Um, so what we do here now is go into base and I'm gonna copy this entire thing and put it into local. So this is our local production server stuff. This is all that is. It's all of our local stuff. And so now if I run it and I refresh in here, let's go ahead and make sure that the server is running correctly. Uh, it, it does run again. So something that we might wanna check out to test this is if I do something like this, all right? So this is a page not found. Let's go back into our local and change debug to being false. Now if I refresh in here, we are gonna get allowed hosts. See, we have to set allowed hosts on here with debug being false. So allowed hosts being in here. I'm just gonna say any host for now, just doing a star. Of course, that's not what we'll end up doing, but that's what I can do now. So now I have allowed hosts, let's run the server again. And I refresh and now it's giving me a page not found. If we go home, it's showing us the home page. We can log in, we can do all this stuff. But when I do this, page not found, all right? That's exactly what we wanna see when it's in debug mode being off. But notice base.html still has debug being true. Local has changed that. So this allows us to kind of do different things depending on what actual file is being loaded. Um, and that's what that init is doing for us. So init underscore py or underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py stands for initialize. So it's initializing this directory which is also known as a folder, which is also known as a, a Python module. So it initializes it. So then the rest of the code treats settings, settings almost as if it was settings.py. That's all it's doing there. Um, so now that we've got this, we are pretty much set up as far as our local environment's concerned. We're set up for everything. Our production environment is not set up yet because we haven't actually jumped into any production code yet. Um, we haven't actually set up our production server or anything like that. So that's actually something we'll do in the next one. If you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.